Hello, Reed. Hello, Paul. This is hey, Reed. Hey, hey, Reed. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fine. Everything's good. All right. How many days are we into this now, Reed? I just uh, forgot to look exactly, but I think it's 728 days uh, sailing at sea without stopping. Okay. How you feeling? I'm feeling real good. I'm uh, very healthy and very happy and uh, very inspired, and it's been a lot of work for me, so I just have a little bit of sore arms and hands from working hard, but I think that that's uh, quite acceptable. You know, it's wonderful you're calling today because yesterday we were up at the uh, Sloop Club with Pete Seeger and talking about, uh, you know, the water and life on the water and the clear water and... Uh, uh, the Woody Guthrie and uh, and you, uh, you came up. Donna mentioned you, and everybody was uh, talking about how our buddy Reed is out at sea for a thousand days. It's good stuff, Reed. And this is, uh, you know, this Earth Day has become quite popular and uh, seems to be getting a lot of uh, involvement, which is good as well. Okay, that's great. So tell us about well, the, I, uh, how things are for you. Uh, excuse me? Tell us about how things have been going for you. Well, things I have to say things are going real good for me to be able to uh, stay at sea for this long uh, because uh, it's hundreds of days um, uh, longer than uh, people have ever uh, been at sea or imagined it. And uh, to be able to do this, I have to say things are going real well for me. Um, uh, it's it's a lot of work sailing a, a big boat like this. It's a lot of work being at sea where the waves and the elements are wearing things down. But all in all, I feel real lucky that um, that I've been able to keep things going and that that I planned well enough. Uh, even though I didn't really have a sponsor, I had some contributions and help from a lot of friends, and um, it was a struggle to get going. Uh, but it turns out that, that I have enough food and and that uh, all of the equipment that I need is, is still working, um, that the satellite phone is still working and all the charging systems are still working and my uh, satellite uh, verification system, which monitors and tells exactly where we are and verifies the voyage, it's working. So uh, I, I, all in all, I feel um, uh, very, very lucky that I'm able to be out here and things are still going. And uh, now I'm uh, in the very middle of the South Atlantic. Uh, I'm up in the trade winds now, and the weather's very, very beautiful. Day and night, the uh, the weather's beautiful, and I, and I just love it. And I and I feel amazed when I look out and and see how wonderful everything is and. It just makes love come out of me, and so I'm real happy about that. Now, I've been planning for a long time to draw a heart in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean, and uh, originally, we drew a great big heart, but we weren't able to do that because we had a collision with the freighter at the very beginning of the voyage, and it disabled the boat, and it made it so that it became harder to sail the boat, and we couldn't sail the boat against the wind very well. So we gave up on sailing our, our big heart. But uh, now I've been for the last couple of months hitting into a position where um, uh, at, at this very moment I'm crossing one of my uh, uh, other tracks. And it, uh, if, if you look on the Google map on my website, 1000days.net, 1000days.net, if you look on that Google map, you'll see uh, two lines, courses that I made with the boat that form a big V. All Hello, right. Paul? Yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. I'm excited. I'm looking okay. also. Okay. And uh, uh, I'm, ge I'm getting ready to turn west now. I'm crossing that line exactly, and I'm going to draw the top of the heart. It's two, the two <laughs> great big lumps at the top of the heart. That's what I'm getting ready to do now. And I think I can do it. I don't think the wind or the currents will um, disrupt my plan, uh, even though sometimes I feel like a leaf and the wind just blows me this way and that way and I don't really have a lot of choice. Right now I think I'm in a good position where I can make it. And so what I'm getting ready to draw is the heart. 
Yay! It's it's going to be a a symbol that everyone in the world can understand. And when they see a map of where I've been around the world, they're going to see this heart. And so it doesn't matter who they are, from what country, what age. Everyone knows the symbol of the heart and what it means. And it's uh, one of the most important and well-known symbols in the world. And it brings the message of love. And that is uh, so important for everything. And that's where I am right now. I'm getting ready to draw a great big heart. Uh, and uh, it'll, it, that'll be the message from the voyage, the message of love. Read from morning to night on an average day, what are some of the things you do? Well, uh, 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 24 hours a day. Uh, I counted the waves for one minute, and then I multiplied them up. And I uh, realized that I ride 33,100 uh, and something waves a day to come and rock the boat. Now, I counted them looking at the waves, little waves, big waves. I counted them. And then I, I closed my eyes and I counted just by feeling. And I got the same thing. So th that's pretty accurate. So first of all, I'm riding that many waves a day. I'm constantly moving. The boat is constantly moving. I'm a sailor. I'm on a sailboat. The boat is sailing. I'm keeping it afloat. That's my most important thing, keeping the water out and keeping afloat. And I'm catching the rain, so I have my fresh water to drink. And I'm catching the sun's solar rays in my solar panel. That goes into my batteries, and that charges my cell phone so that I can call you up and talk to you and so that I can um, do my, um, my updates that I send back every other day. I send back a photo of what I'm doing with a little story of what I'm doing. So uh, all of that's happening in the day. Um, now, I have a very uh, exact routine after being at sea for almost exactly two years, April the 21st will be uh, um, the anniversary of two years sailing nonstop at sea. And by this time, I've developed a routine that works for me. Um, I wake up a lot of times during the night and look around and make sure that I'm going good, I'm on course. And I'm out way out in the middle of the far south Atlantic, and I hardly, almost never see ships. So uh, I wake up a lot in the night. But when, when morning comes, I wake up, I, um, I turn on the solar panels, I check my electricity, I, of course, look at the weather and where I am. I always know what course I'm going on and how hard the wind is blowing and so forth. And then I make a, a, a big breakfast, and while I have breakfast, I usually write in my, uh, in my captain's log, my diary, my updates, and, uh, and then I get to work. And, and whatever it is that, that calls me that's the most important thing to do, I, I, I get to work, and I, and I work all morning long. And I work pretty hard. I'm a pretty hard worker. I uh, built this schooner, and I had to work real hard to get the schooner ready to go to sea. So when I work, I work real hard. It could be anything from sewing sails to cleaning and organizing. Uh, today I had to uh, put some chain around the very tip of the boat to hold the cable in the front because the, 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 the turnbuckle that's holding the cable in the front is uh, uh, held by a half-inch thick big piece of steel and those two things have been rubbing together 33,000 waves a day for two years and the steel is wearing thin and I'm afraid it's going to break. I've already had a number of things break. So I spent parts of the last three days with my, in my safety harness, uh, hanging over the very tip of the boat, uh, devising a system to fix that so that it wouldn't break. Then I have lunch, and I, uh, I always have a big, big meal. So I have a big lunch, and I grow my sprouts. I rinse my sprouts, and I grow my sprouts, so I have a big lunch with sprout salad, and I sit and I read a little bit, usually uh, inspirational books, uh, um, uh, spiritual, religious, something that inspires me and gives me strength to keep going. I'm reading while I'm eating, but when I finish eating, I get back to work. And uh, I usually take a little nap in the, in the afternoon, almost exactly, and I meditate and I bring healing rays into my body to heal me. 
and relax me and soothe my tired muscles, and I take a little nap so that I'm not too tired so that I can wake up a lot during the night. And I wake up from my nap, and then I have my coffee afternoon snack. And after that, uh, which is right now for me, uh, I uh, usually get to work on the computer so that I can uh, send out my photo for the day, my story. And, uh, and then the, the, the day passes. I always try to take a little look at the sunrise, and I always try to relax and take a little look at the sunset and watch the sun go down and watch the sky change to twilight and wait for the first stars to come out. And then I do my yoga session. And, uh, and I always do my yoga session every day. That's part of what keeps my body uh, physically limber and strong and keeps my mind tuned into a spiritual strength that guides me and takes care of me. Then I have a, a, a big dinner with my sprout salad. And uh, and, I, and then after dinner, I clean up and I prepare my spouse for the next day. And then I'm uh, about ready to uh, go to bed. So that's the, the story of uh, one day and what happens to me out here at sea. It's beautiful now. And, and this just goes on and on and on. And every time I look out, I say, wow, this is just the most beautiful place to be. I'm so lucky and I'm so grateful. Every time I How's look... That for yeah. Every time I look out, I am overwhelmed with how beautiful it is. I am awestruck, filled with wonder and yeah. happiness, and an inner smile with heart clapping. It happens to me again and again, day and night. Tears come to my eyes, and I cry. I don't know if it is me or the sea. Reed, your writing has become really beautiful. I love it. I'm so happy oh, always man. to get it. I only well, can suggest you, for every... I mean, it's so gorgeous, Reed. You're, within the last few years, it's just gotten to be like a... You're, you've turned into a Steinbeck Hemingway. <laughs> you're really doing beautiful, well, Reed. We're really it, proud of it, you it here. keeps me inspired. Well, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate it, Paul, and... and Thank you, and, and you know, I'm uh, very grateful to you because it was on, uh, maybe 10 years ago yeah. that you got this uh, phone uh, uh, for me, and uh -huh. when, when we did the Odyssey of the Sea Turtle, right. we did our interviews, and I think you probably still have them somewhere on we your do. big good news website, uh -huh. yeah. and, and I'm using that same phone 10 years <laughs> later. I think it's very amazing. <laughs> The Wave just said so, something about it yesterday. Wave, I was with Wave yesterday, your brother, and uh, he was saying how you know how, how we, we've come so far, all of us. So it's really, really good. I'm gonna one last question, Reed. Uh, what's good news for Reed Stowe? Uh, well, uh, what what's good news is that I'm able to uh, talk to you and and connect with you, and that you share the story with the world, and and we have a a good, loving, uh, heartfelt story to share with the world. That's that's the good news. All right, Rita. We love you and we miss you. And uh, and keep up the good work. And uh, we're very, very proud of you. Thanks a lot, Paul. And I'll be in close touch. And I look forward to talk to you again soon. Okay. Take care, my friend. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.